Hey everybody, last video in the unit. Monaco here. And Milks. And we're coming to page 26 through 28 in your pack. We're hitting up the last three trends on the properties of the periodic table and how they're related to the nuclear shielding effect. Electronegativity, ionization energy, and reactivity. Now electronegativity was the thing that gelled chemistry for me um, as a chemist. This just clicked for me and it made everything else make sense. Okay? Yeah. Um, so electronegativity is, first, the desire to gain electrons. Yeah. How bad do I as an atom want another electron from another atom? How bad you're going to steal? Sure. Or to borrow. Right. If I'm in need, right. how bad are you in right. need? It's a measurement of it. Sure. It's like the Grinch, the greediness of an atom or ion for electrons. Like Grinch, Grinch wants to steal the precious uh, president. Right. right. We actually have um, numbers on table S to, to help us gauge, you know, from zero as being low to four being as high as it could possibly be. And this is on the Pauling scale, so it's not actually a unit. No, but at least we can make sense of one atom to another. It's like a rank. Yeah. Yeah. It's really just good looking. For sure. Uh, so as you go across a period, um, the electronegativity increases, and especially for the main group elements. Now, the transition metals, you're looking at this picture, you see them either go up and then they go down again. For the main group elements, as you go across a period, electronegativity goes up. Because the need to fill the octet of electrons is growing the closer you get to the finish line, right? It's like an athlete that speeds up or gets strong, a strong finisher. That's the deal. And it's also related to the effect of nuclear charge increasing. As you go across a period, the number of protons in the nucleus increases. The number of kernel electron shells stays the same. And the valence electron shell gets pulled in, sucked in closer to the nucleus because the effect of nuclear charge increases. Right. And the greater the effect of nuclear charge, the more likely it's able to reach out beyond its valence shell and steal electrons from something else. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. So now as I go down a group, my electronegativity is going to go down. The nuclear shielding is going to increase. I have more and more layers of those kernel electrons, so my effective nuclear charge is going down. I just can't feel that electron from this outside atom is good. I just don't really want it. It's it's like two magnets that are just farther and farther and further right. away. From They're not going to pull real, real far. Nope. Okay. nope. That's electronegativity. Sounds like a big bad word, but it's really it's a very simple idea. It's a simple idea that is so like so. You, it encompasses yeah. all the trends in this unit. Yep. It helps us understand the next unit for bionic and covalent bonding, yep. as well as polarity, intermolecular yep. forces, yep. reactivity. It, it is it's a, just it's like, huge. It's a huge idea that is it, if we can break it down. It's not that difficult, but you got to retain it. Right. So now, circle which one has of each pair has the greatest electronegativity. Are we going to do this for him, Mr. Milks? Um, actually, I'm going to say no. Yeah. How about we go to table S because and look these things up. They're all listed here. So uh, if you could read the periodic table S, you can find the electronegativity value. And or lithium and potassium. Look them up. Circle whichever one's bigger. That's it. Right. And so how do you know if an element's electronegativity is larger or smaller than its partner? Just by looking at locations on the periodic table. The trend we just discussed. As you go across, electronegativity it gets bigger. Up. As you go down, it goes down. Right. So, so where no am it. I? Am I lower? Am I farther to the right or left? I can figure out which way I am between. This, between proper, this property also kind of goes along with metallic character. Yeah, it does It does quite a bit. Yeah. Most of them we'll do. Get there. Because all those characters and properties are related to guess what? Electronegativity. And the nuclear shielding and effective charge. That's right. That's right. So now ionization energy. Mm -hmm. um, ionization energy. If I'm going to make an ion, I'm going to lose an electron. This is positive ionization energy. Right. Like so this is how much energy it takes to remove one electron. Which creates a positive ion. To make a positive ion. And so there's the definition. In our table S, it's called first ionization energy. Because it's that first electron. Not the second or third afterwards. No. Just how much energy it takes no. to steal away like one. The, like the SAT electron. is designed to tell me how good I do in the first, first year. year of college. Right. Nothing more. Right. Nothing more. Go ahead, Mr. So Mr. there we go. The ionization energy is the amount of energy needed to remove the outermost electron from an atom. Mm -hmm. How much energy is it going to take to steal. for you to get it? Now, I like to think of an analogy of a football running back right. holding the football. If I'm running down the field like Mike Vick, palming the ball, holding it out way far away from my body, it's not going to take you all that much energy to knock that ball out of my hand. Steal it from him. Right. But if I'm Tiki Barber, holding that ball high and tight, it's going to take two, three guys with mm -hmm. lots of energy. Maybe have a chance at getting it. Because it's higher. So 
It's closer to the nucleus. Right, which would be my center. It's feeling the effective nuclear charge greater. There you go. And it's harder to remove it. So let's talk about the trend. So as you go across that period, the ionization energy increases. It's related to filling that balance shell to a full octet, which is also related to the effective nuclear charge. So as the effective nuclear charge goes up, the external most electrons are feeling the pull of the nucleus greater, yep. and therefore it's harder to pull them away. Right. So hold them tight. Yep. yep. And as I go down a group, it's going to decrease because that shielding increases. I have more and more layers buffering that outside electron from the inner nucleus. So the inner nucleus cannot pull on those outer ones as much. So therefore, it's farther away. Looser held. Looser held. And if another atom comes by, it doesn't take as much energy for them to take my easier outer to, electron. Easier to steal it. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're not going to do these ones for you. Why? Because I can look them up on table S. And so can you. Yes, you can. Okay, you can look up the sodium, one. you can look up oxygen. Largest Red. ionization. Right, it's going to say first ionization energy. I'm yeah, gonna, I'm sorry. But, yeah, well, don't get, up, don't get hung up on small little details like that. Yeah. How do you know if an element's ionization energy is larger or smaller? Know the trend. There you go. Okay. Well, we just discussed it. For sure. Now, we've done ionization, positive ions and negative ions so far in atomic theory. Right. What happens to an atom when it becomes an ion in terms of its size? Does, it, does its radius get bigger or smaller? Right. Does the atom get bigger or smaller when it becomes an ion? And I like this little chart. This is a cute little chart. Notice that, like, if I look at group one lithium here, that lithium plus one ion in the upper right, left hand corner it's red. is red, and so is the inner piece under the our radius. picture is red. The radius, yep. Yep. And then the outside piece is the regular lithium with that extra shell is gray. Neutral. And that's how this thing, this particular chart works. Notice there's, the elements are listed twice. Mm -hmm. Right, the element and the ion. Actually. So for this example, group one, lithium is a metal. Metals yep. are losers when it comes to electrons. Yep. And so lithium becomes a positively charged ion when it loses an electron. Right. And as a result, it gets smaller. Right. And if you think about it, it has one valence electron in its valence shell. Which if is I, not very well held. Not very well held. And if I lose it, nuclear charge, I lose a whole layer. And so the layer's got to be small. So the whole, like, right, the radius has got to be small. It's smaller. like peeling so, the outside layer off an onion. Right. Whatever you're left with is going to be smaller. It's got to be smaller. Period. So, so all the metals will behave this way. When they become positive, the ion, ions, positive one, two, or three, they get smaller. Right. Nonmetals are the opposite of metals. And that's number two. And so when they become negatively charged ions by gaining electrons, mm -hmm. they will get bigger. And so in this picture, notice the atom now is on the left. And the ion is on the right yep. because I'm gaining electrons. If oxygen gains two electrons, it's going to get bigger. It's going to get bigger. And if you think about it, oxygen has eight protons. Yep. So he's got eight electrons, six in the valence shell. So its effective nuclear charge is positive too. Right. And then if I gain more electrons, its effective nuclear charge is still positive too. Right. But it, well, but my my charge per electron has got to go down. And they'll spread out. Right, because it's not a one-to-one -one ratio anymore. No, it's not. No. So that's how that works. Yeah. The electrons okay. will spread out and balance out. we so got one more quick one trend. More. One more quick trend, the reactivity. Unit. And then this unit is over. And that's, that's it. Talk about it. So reactivity, this is like the ability or tendency of an element to go through a chemical change, meaning to react with another element by losing or gaining electrons, which right. we'll so see it, in the future. So it's almost but. two trends in one. Mm -hmm. Am I going to gain an electron or am I going to lose? Because the ones who gain really well are very reactive. And the ones who lose very well are also, also reactive. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's start with... Two prize fighters in opposite corners of the ring. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. All right, so the most reactive metal, we're going to find him in the lower left-hand corner. His electronegativity is very low, and metals want to lose electrons. And so if I really want to lose electrons, and I'm not holding on to that outside one very much, I'm going to lose it real fast. Because someone else is going to steal it. And if I lose it real fast, I react. Very out. reactive. Yes. Yep. Like that so person you say one thing to and they just snap and just go off on you. Yep. We've, Boom. We've, we've seen that kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So francium, cesium, barium, radium. Most reactive. Yeah. Okay. Most reactive nonmetal. Opposite corner of the ring. Ding, ding, ding. Upper right. Electronegativity is very high. And nonmetals want to gain electrons very well. So while the metals are very good losers, the right. nonmetals are very good winners, right. and they steal and take very quickly, very easily. Right. So that puts us with the fluorine, fluorine right. oxygen ring. Fluorine round. only has that that second energy level. Two energy levels. Right. Yep. So in that second energy level now, it's already got seven. That that 
one electron that's coming by that it wants to get can Snatch. really fill, feel the effect of that nucleus. Right. Because there's no layers in between like there would be with something like bromine or iodine. Bromine or iodine, yeah. Yeah, iodine. It's, those have multiple, multiple layers, and it's, that electron from the other atom just can't feel the nucleus quite as much. And fluorine comes along and just steals it. And fluorine's going to beat you every time. Absolutely. So, let's see what else we got here. You are not going to be able to look reactivity up on the periodic table. No. So this one, should we talk yeah. through it a little bit? We'll talk through it a little bit, yeah. Okay. So sodium versus magnesium. Which one's more reactive, Mr. Milks? Well, I see sodium kind of top left, but magnesium is to the right. So the one that's more left, is farther left, more reactive. More reactive. So it's got to be sodium. Magnesium or radium? Mg is towards the top, radium is towards the bottom. And if radium's below it, then it's got to be more reactive. More reactive. Three, lithium or beryllium, what do you say? Uh, ooh, beryllium is to the right of lithium, so lithium is farther left. More reactive. Uh, copper or francium? Copper's in the middle transition. Yeah, I also. already know, fron fr I say francium. Francium is the easily most reactive metal there is. He Got wins it. every time. Rubidium and lithium, RB. Lithium's above rubidium, rubidium's towards the bottom. Got to be rubidium. Yep, got to be rubidium. Um, calcium and barium. barium. Mm -hmm. I there see we calcium. Go. I see barium is too below, mm -hmm. farther down, more reactive. Strontium or magnesium? Strontium is two shells lower, so it's got two more electron shells than magnesium. It's bigger, less lower effective nuclear charge. It's going to be more reactive. There you go. Okay, so now, how do I know if they're more reactive? Based on it's larger or smaller than its partner, looking at uh, the locations on the periodic table. Trends. Trends. Metal. Farther, lower left-hand corner is most reactive. All the way left, all the way to the bottom, most reactive. Non-metal. Upper right. So let's go through the let's go through the non-metals now quick. Non-metals, N or O. O looks like it's closer to the, fluorine. Yo, O is closer to the top right, so O has got to be more reactive. Sulfur or oxygen. Sulfur is below oxygen. Oxygen is closer to the top right corner. Got to be gotta more be. reactive. How about that next? Chlorine one? and fluorine. Well, we already know fluorine is the most reactive non-metal, so fluorine's got to trump fluorine. Got to be it. Phosphorus or sulfur? P or S. Sulfur is closer to the right and top of the periodic table than phosphorus, so it is more reactive. Yep. Um, bromine or iodine? Bromine is above iodine, even though they're both halogens, so bromine has a greater effective nuclear charge. Bromine mm -hmm. wins. Nitrogen or phosphorus? It looks like they're pretty close, tied neck and neck there. Well, one's above the other. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So nitrogen's above phosphorus. It's just got to be more reactive. Got to be. Carbon or nitrogen? Carbon or nitrogen. I see nitrogen is farther to the right, closer to fluorine. Got to be more reactive. Yeah. So how do you know if a non-metallic element's reactivity is larger or smaller? You got to know your trends. Upper right. Upper right corner. The closer you start, the closer you are to it, the more reactive you are. Yep. Are you next to which prize fighter? Fluorine. Well, Right. Which, or francium. They right. both start with right. So think of those prize fighters, guys. Chlorine right and francium. So which one of those is the most reactive metal, metal Mr. Milks? Um, francium. 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 Most reactive non-metal. Fluorine. Chlorine. I'm just kidding. Fluorine. I'm just messing with you. I know. <laughs> Anyways. You thought I, he actually had uh, What's the most reactive non-metal? Fluorine. Reactive metal. Francium. There we go. Um, so, you need to know about these trends. Electronegativity and ionization energy sound like big bad words. They're right here waiting for us yeah, to find. In number form, so we can compare one to the other. Do not guess. But we do need to know what they mean. Yes. We do need to know what they mean. And we do not guess the trends. So we have three trends now total. We do not have to guess. Because you got table S. Right. Let's do start. not guess. You got table S. There you go. Atomic right. radius, electronegativity, ionization, ionization energy. energy. The only trend you do have to memorize is the metal and non-metal right. reactivity. So if you can remember that the most reactive metal is lower left, the most reactive non-metal non is upper right, you're good. You're good. And we are done. Thanks, everybody, for watching, listening, bearing with us, and crushing this unit. Yep. See you guys in class. Sure.